Welcome back to PWAs for Beginners. Today, here with me is Zach again. Hello. <laughs> We're going to be talking about caching and fetching using service workers. Let's start from the top. What does caching mean? Yeah, so basically caches are just local storage space that we can use to store assets that are essential to our PWA. Um, we can use this space for anything we want, or anything we want, or our PWA may need when it's offline, source code, images, response bodies, or anything else your PWA might need. Awesome. So what do we actually use cache for then? Yeah, so in the context of progressive web apps, we can think of caches as our offline backup, a place where we can fetch content from when the network is not available. Um, in the last video, we mentioned the fetch event, and it's often when we handle this event that we actually make use of our caches. Um, there are a ton of different strategies for fetching and caching. Um, a lot of these have their own pros and cons, and some of them are going to be easier to implement than others. So I, th I think what I heard is you're saying that we want to make our assets for our website available, and then we're talking about like when they're going to be available. So how do I, what's like how do I go go ahead and start with it? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, one of the first things we're going to want to take care of um, when we start working with fetching and caching is something called pre-caching. Um, Pre-caching is just when we cache assets prior to when we actually need them. Um, in the second of, uh, video, we mentioned the install event, and this is often where you'll see pre-caching handled. Um, in the code snippet below, you can see we just have a name for our cache, a list of assets we want to cache, and then in an event listener for install, we open a cache and add our assets to that cache. Um, this way, we'll always have a cache version of our assets ready to go, even if the network is unavailable later on. Okay, sounds like our cache is available. Now that let's talk about like, how do we do these caching strategies that you're yeah, using? So, what's, what's the easiest one? Yeah, once you have something in your cache, you actually need a way to you know fetch it. Um, and the easiest way to implement a strategy for this is called cache first. Um, this is one of the most basic starter strategies. Um, it has you know a few drawbacks, but it's really easy to get started with. Um, so in its essence, in the cache first strategy, we'll check for a valid response in the cache first. So we receive that fetch event. We'll go and check the cache to see if the response we're looking for is in there. Um, and if it's not in there, we're going to go to the network um, to try to find the match. So basically, we're always going to go to the cache unless it doesn't work out, and then we're going to make the request to the network if we can't get a response from the cache. Pretty like a, straightforward. Like an interceptor in the middle. Yeah. Um, so this one almost always uses the cache if it has the asset and it doesn't necessarily check the network. Um, as you can probably guess, this may lead to stale content. We might right. just might just grabbing the same old content over and over again. Um, but it's pretty easy to implement and understand, so it's a good place to start. Okay. Well, it sounds like cash first strategy is really good for beginners. Um, what if that we wanted to do more with it? Yeah. So with just a little more complexity, we can improve to a more balanced approach. Um, we can use a strategy called stale while we're validate, which is a popular and relatively straightforward way to handle fetch events. Um, just like cash first, stale while we're validate, it starts by going to the cache to check for a response. Um, and if it finds that asset, it'll return it right away. However, it changes up a little bit from there. Um, regardless of whether or not a match is found, the strategy will go to the network in the background, fetch a new version of our asset, and update the cache in the background. This is going to keep our content fresh. Um, kind of the last thing it does is if there's no match found in the first place, it just goes straight to the network, returns that response, and then updates the cache again. Um, this approach gives a great balance of freshness and speed. We get a cache response right away. The user doesn't have to wait. Um, and then we have the cache updated for if we need the asset again later on. So we're going to get freshness later on and speed right away. Cool. So we've talked about two strategies. One is if you're new to caching and fetching, this is what you should do to get your feet wet. And then the, the second one that we talked about was kind of like if you want to do more involved things with caching, that that's what the strategy there should, that you should be going with. Um, I know that there are also a lot more caching strategies out there yes. that our users should go or developers should go explore on their yep. own. Yeah, so so here are all the resources again. Thank you, Zach, for mm -hmm. telling us all about caching and fetching yes. in the service workers. And in the next video, we're going to talk about more things, other things than caching in service worker.